what is up ladies and gentlemen i wish you all a good morning today's video a really quick discussion hopefully about a very frequently discussed topic actually and that is ideal muscularity for rock climbing um how big a climber need to be essentially i'm getting this question quite a lot people are worrying uh, man is weight training doing me any good for climbing is this or that training doing me any good for climbing because it puts some weight on I gain some muscles relatively quickly and is it actually useful you know let's section the video into uh, two sections maybe first of all I would like to try to assess which body type nowadays at least gets the most results as it seems in the uh, very high-end level climbing world and then second of all how can we maybe get close to that how we can you know if we don't have the genetic components that are necessary to achieve that how can we you know with conditioning very often at least try to mimic this sort of state to um, achieve peak performance at least for a short time for us mere mortals out there right i've got my notes here as usual what is probably the most successful body type in nowadays high-end climbing and this is definitely if we look at guys like Adam Ondra, Alex Migos, Stefano Gesolfi, uh, Jakob Schubert, all the names and also for, from bowlering like Daniel Woods or Dave Graham we can definitely see a pattern here we're talking about a very very lean shredded lightweight crowd right and now some of you might say, well, uh, they don't look actually that as, uh, crazy, uh, non-humanly light, right, uh, on, on all these videos and stuff like that. But the thing is, if you're meeting one of these guys in real life, you will first of all, you will for the first time grasp how freaking lean and shredded they actually are, right? So it is really obviously the case that um, nowadays high-end climbers are generally of the lean ectomorph type kind of guy okay and um, what does that mean well it usually means a very low body weight compared to their height and a lot of weight is located in the upper body okay so we have usually chicken legs we have a lot of weight located in the upper body long arms to be honest i think the era of the more muscled climber probably went to an end with chris sharma who was somewhere in between of the two extremes, I have the feeling, of the two extremes of the very muscled climber and the very lean climber of nowadays. And before Chris Sharma, we had a lot more, um, you know, a lot of a lot more big guys at the top of climbing. It was funny to see when you, when you look in at really old climbing movies um, where they showcase some people, they are usually a lot more muscled than usual than nowadays. They look like um, modern fitness dudes sometimes almost, right? So yeah, it's really fun to see how that has changed. And I think one person who represents still the old era would be uh, Wolfgang Güllich who uh, sent also 9A, who climbed also extremely hard in the Frankenjura in Germany. And uh, yeah, this was the guy that I always have in my mind when, I, when it comes to a perfect example for a really muscled guy who also trained a lot in the gym already, did a lot of campus sporting. He, I think he goes down at the inventor of the campus sport even. But yeah, very muscled dude, climbing still very, very hard. But from then on, it just went into the direction of very, very lean guys, more ectomorph style climbers. And that kind of thing, you know, and this is what we see nowadays, not only in competitions, but also outdoors on rock. Obviously, there's a huge genetic component involved into these things, as I've discussed previously in my in countless times in my genetic for climbing videos and stuff like that. I think the body fat percentage that you can diet down to or that you can get down to, however you do it, um, without having any negative effects when it comes to health and stuff like that, uh, are very genetically dependent. Some of us just thrive at a higher body fat percentage and, and some of us are very able, very capable to go very, very low with body fat percentage without noticing any negative effects. So here we already see a kind of splitting up in body types, genetically dependent body types and probably the, the high-end climber is in the low body fat percentage crowd, right? So in terms of weight and height and stuff like that, what numbers are we dealing with here? 
Um, I always give myself as an example. Currently, I'm in the region of 66 to 67 kilograms. Don't click away and try to uh, translate that into inches and feet because I already did that work for you, my friend. So 66 kilograms would be 146 pounds, 68 kilograms would be 150 pounds around, something like that. Uh, this is my current weight. Uh, at a height of 173 centimeters, 5 feet 8. Okay, 5 foot 8. Would I operate in the high-end crowd? My body weight would probably be something closer to below 60 kilograms, which is below 132 pounds. So we could say below 130 pounds, right? So with a height of 173 uh, centimeters, which is 5 foot 8, you should be probably below 60 kilograms, probably below 132 pounds. That's just the reality uh, of the things. I've met people with just the exact height, just the exact height that I have, um, who played in that weight category, and it was amazing to see how how much better their uh, finger strength to body weight ratio worked out for the really hard stuff. Um, yeah, that's just the way it is. And um, but we always have to work with what we have, right? So. How can we, if we are not in the, you know, genetically gifted one top 1% when it comes to body morphology and body type and stuff like that? Because I think there's a couple of tactics that you can utilize to, um, to kind of push yourself into that direction for at least a short time with conditioning. Now, one thing that's obviously playing a big role is diet. And I've talked about that as well when it comes to genetics. Um, I'm not sure whether the top guys, the pros, achieve their super leanness for their body type with dieting. Uh, so that they always, you know, sit at the dinner table and think, well, that's enough for me. I don't need to eat more. I'm just, you know, they are genetically gifted in such a way that they don't have such a big appetite as the normal crowd while the normal crowd says hey give me one more portion these dudes just say, should just say no i'm full thanks and without them even realizing they subconsciously stay you know they they eat very little calories and they stay lean all the time because of that or is it rather that they for example is it maybe what they eat right a lot of people have pointed out that uh, a lot of these pros seem to be on a very very plant-based diet and i can very well imagine that although i will say that i know for sure that neither andra nor magos nor one of all these high-end guys is on a vegan diet there's um quotes of them saying even of andra i think where he says that without fish and without meat he feels a little different he feels a bit weaker Right, and I think there's a quote from Magos where he says that um, Quark macht stark, right? <laughs> Quark macht stark, which is Quark is, is some of uh, is a form of fresh cheese in Germany, right? So all these people know their know the importance also of anim animal products in the diet as well. However, a very high carb, very plant based diet combined with a lot of exercise will get you very very shredded very very lean i've seen this myself in my vegan days when i was vegan <clears throat> and i did so in a very high carb way i was down at 62 63 kilograms right which is a lot closer to my ideal weight that i should have given my body height compared to nowadays where i'm 66 67 68 even sometimes right depending on what i do depending on what i eat um so yeah Diet definitely has an influence here. You can shred yourself down. That doesn't mean that that's healthy, though. In fact, it's probably the opposite of healthy, right? Shredding yourself down with lots of exercise and a high-carb, plant-based diet is probably the opposite of healthy. But, yeah, you can get closer to the numbers that you would like to have, right? Another, another very effective method that I found without having to utilize this pathway is just simply fasting. Uh, putting yourself into ketosis, burn off a lot of body fat, lose a lot of water weight because you're burning off all the carbs in your body. That already get, gets rid of a lot of kilograms in your body as well, right? And then there is another method that I talked about also in the context with this first AC Plus that I've sent. That is the late night evening run after your dinner before the day you want to actually send. Now what this does is it empties the energy energy resources of your legs. And what we've discussed before, as an ectomorph body type climber, we actually want to have a lot of weight in the upper body, right? We want to have a high center of gravity. 
this is useful for a number of reasons but uh, I'm not gonna get into detail now why um, however you can actually make your legs quite lean short term with this kind of evening run you have your dinner then you do your you do your evening run burn off all the calories in your legs and then the next day when you go to sleep instantly afterwards you don't you, you should not eat anything afterwards right because then the body would have um, a possibility to replace those energy resources again and your legs will get a little bit bigger again but if you don't eat anything afterwards and just go to sleep and send the next day really quickly get up and send it in the morning <laughs> your project um, this is actually a really effective strategy for people with legs. I might need a separate video for the topic because it's actually very requested as well. But anyway, these are the strategies that could somehow help the genetically not so gifted climber to push it, his body somewhat into the direction of the more genetically gifted crowd, right? Apart from uh, morphometrical stuff like how long your arms are, how tall you are and stuff like that. Just merely looking at body weight and uh, finger strength to body weight ratio. So yeah, this is what I would say when it comes to additional exercise. I've talked about how I gained a lot of muscle quite quickly when I did a lot of this calisthenic stuff, which is not necessarily useful for climbing performance let's put, it, let's put it that way a lot of it is actually antagonistic work with a lot of pushing and the delts the shoulders it stabilizes your body very well which is good for injury prevention probably but in terms of climbing performance it doesn't really give you that much of an edge maybe a bit of core okay maybe a bit of body strength but that's that's probably it so are weights necessary for climbing training, for climbing, for rock climbing in general? No, probably not. All that stuff is only going to put additional muscle onto your body, put additional weight onto your body that you probably don't need. As an ideally gifted climber, we only want weight in one place of our body and that's the forearms. Right? You want to have as strong fingers as possible and everything else can be super lean stick figure style. Okay. So this is probably what the ideal climber looks like. This is how I would discuss it. It is interesting how it changed uh, over time with the old days, with the more muscled climber. But this era is obviously going to an end. Today, in the very high-end grades and also in competitions, we see the very, very lean, very, very uh, towards ectomorph style climber. Um, and yeah, that's probably what you should look like from a genetic perspective if you wanted to play in that <coughs> in these realms as well, right? Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the little discussion. Um, I'm happy to receive your feedback down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video. And yeah, uh, great weather today. I think we're gonna maybe head to the beach afterwards or something like that. First of all, have a nice breakfast. All right, all right, <laughs> all right. I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.